Welcome. Today we'll be looking at the CQG RTD Toolkit for Excel. Once you've installed the toolkit, it'll appear on the Excel ribbon, as you see here. Left click, and we have the various features and functions available using the CQG RTD Toolkit. We have an exchange list, we have exchange info, we have a commodities list, we have a derivatives list, we can get label data, such as you see in the QSS. We can get depth of market data. We have bar values, a handful of study values, and finally, order statistics. So to start, let's get an exchange list. So I click here, and this opens. And I have my choices of which exchanges I want, and I'm gonna just start off with just the futures. So. I can get in the abbreviation of the, of the exchange, the name of the exchange, the type, and the current status. So if I click Add, you can see it's going to output it to cell B5 is where it'll start because I have that selected here. I'm going to close this. So you can see I have the abbreviation for the CBOT, the full name is the Chicago Board of Trade, the type, and the status. The status is one means that I'm enabled for the exchange. If it's a zero, that means I'm not enabled for the exchange. Regarding the type, let's switch over here to this tab. I have this table over here on the right and it gives a value for the different instrument types that are available from the exchange. So with this type here is the sum from this table. So the CBOT has cash quotes, it has options on futures, and it has futures. That totals 32 plus 6 plus 1 is 39 and that's what that value means. Continuing on, now we'll take a look at the exchange info. This is actually a very simple version of what's over here in this master list. So you can see I've entered in the exchange symbol CBOT and I've asked for the abbreviation, the name, the type, and the status and it'll be output to cell G5. Now in this case, if I wanted to have a G5 across to J5, then I would just simply put in the colon and then J5, and now it'll put those four values there. Or I can have it just go straight down. So it's the same information, only just calling it by the symbol. Next, we'll be looking at the commodities list. Here you put in the exchange. Now, as you see here, I have CBOT in quotations, or I could reference a cell. I could say G5. You see in cell G5, it says CBOT. For the country, all futures use the US letters for futures. Doesn't matter what country the futures are traded in. But if you were looking like at stocks, say from the Swiss Stock Exchange, you would put in CH. To help you find this information, go to the CQG Symbol Finder and you will see in the symbol column for whatever exchange you're looking at, you will see the proper code. So I have futures checked for CBOT. I'm going to be putting it in cell J5. So I hit add and now I have all the futures contracts traded on the CBOT. Next we will work with the derivative list. This calls data, uh, the same data that you would see in the all contracts window. So my first symbol here is EP for the E-mini S&P. It's a futures market. I'm gonna output to cell L5. So now we have the current five contracts on the E-mini S&P. Let's move over a cell. And I'm going to show you what happens if I call for, say, a calendar spread? QOS1, I sprint crude calendar spread, one month. Going to the output to M5, add. So now I have all of the one month calendar spreads. Move over another cell. I'm gonna drop down here a little bit. I'm gonna ask for some options data. So I'm gonna change the symbol to crude. 
options. I'm going to call for call options. I'm going to call for the second contract out. Currently November would be the first one. The second is December. Number of strikes less than at the money, I'll have five. Number of strikes greater than at the money, I'll have five. It's output to cell N9, so it'll be a group. And then last, I'm going to pull in fixed income data. So I'll change the symbol to the tenure for broker tech. Fixed income. Output to P5, add. So now I have all of the symbols of the 10 year treasuries that were initially auctioned as 10 year treasuries, just like in the all contracts window. Okay, next we're going to be looking at label data. This is similar to working with the QSS. So I open up the interface. You can see here for contract I have B5. So what I'm doing now this time is I'm having the RTD call reference a cell. So it's going to use a symbol that's in B5. So I can put in, first started some letters like net. So let's say I want net last trade. And then let's say I want last trade. So I type in last, click it. And that's going to take up two cells. So I put in D, C5 and D5, and I click Add. So now I have last trade and net last trade. And I have it set to be decimals. So let's copy and paste this down. So now it's picking up the uh, symbols in each of the cells. And I can reformat this to be numbers, two decimal places. The next feature is DOM data. Click on it. I can put in a symbol or reference a cell. So this time I'll just put in EP again. I want to know the price, the type, and the volume. Number of bids, make it five, and S. I'm going to use decimals again. So it's going to output it to 10, F10, excuse me. So here we have the, the bid and the ask, the prices, and the resting volume. Next, we'll be looking at bar values. We can put in again the symbol. You can put in the time interval. You can ask for the time, the open, high, low, check whatever you want in here. I'm going to get the, the time, the open, high, low, close. Um, I'm going to use a decimal format. I'm going to have it be 21 bars, and I'm going to output it to J5. Um, also, we have this as far as which sessions you may want to use. Do you want to use equalized closes, customs? I'm just going to do a straight one. These values down here are for studies values. Um, we have CVB bars, point and figure, and T-flow. And for this example, I'm just going to use a straight bar value. So, you can see we have 21 bars. Of Next on the list are studies. We have just a handful, as you can see. Moving average, Bollinger Bands, Oscillator, Momentum, RSI and parabolic. As always, put in the symbol or you can reference a cell. Choose your time interval. Here I'm going to stay with just the simple 21 bar. I'm going to use the closing price. I'm going to use the decimal format. It's going to output 21 five minute bars of the 21 moving average starting with P5. And here's where we can use this. Um, 
study recalculator mode. If Excel interval is checked, then it's going to be using the throttle. If it's end of bar, then it'll be updated every five minutes. And if it's end of bar and periodic, so you could say, I want it to be the end of bar, but updated every 60 seconds. And this is an important tool to use. It can really reduce the load on Excel and CQG as compared to calling for every updated tick. So I say OK, and then Add. And so now you can see I have moving average. And so there's that study. And last on the list is order statistics. I have it open here with my simple, my SCM ID, my account name. I've checked all this off. It's going to output to cell C21. And close. So if I was to place a trade, you can see it shows the amount of Filled buy orders, filled sell orders. Open position is 10, I'm down $125, up $125. This concludes our video. For more information about CQG products and services, please visit CQG.com.